This lecture is about the vector space retrieval model. We are going to give an introduction to its basic idea. In the last lecture, we talked about the different ways of designing a retrieval model, which would give us a different ranking function. In this lecture, we're going to talk about a specific way of designing a ranking function called a vector space retrieval model. And we're going to give a brief introduction to the basic idea. Vector space model is a special case of similarity based models, as we discussed before, which means we assume relevance is roughly similarity between the document and the query. Now, whether this assumption is true is actually a question. But in order to solve a search problem, we have to convert the vague notion of relevance into a more precise definition that can be implemented uh, with the program language. So in this process, we have to make a number of assumptions. Uh, this is the first assumption that we make here. Basically, we assume that if a document is more similar to a query than another document, then the first document will be assumed to be more relevant than the second one. And this is the basis for ranking documents in this approach. Again, it's questionable whether this is really the best definition for relevance. As we will see later, there are other ways to model relevance. The basic idea of vector space retrieval model is actually very easy to understand. Imagine a high dimensional space where each dimension corresponds to a term. So here I show a three dimensional space with three words, programming, library, and prestigial. So each term here defines one dimension. Now we can consider vectors in this three-dimensional space. And we're going to assume that all our documents and the query will be placed in this vector space. So for example, one document might be represented by this vector, D1. Now this means this document probably covers library and presidential, but it doesn't really talk about programming. Right? What does this mean in terms of representation of document. That just means we're going to look at our document from the perspective of this vector. We're going to ignore everything else. Basically, what we see here is only the vector representation of the document. Of course, the document has other information. For example, the orders of words are simply ignored. And that's because we assume that the back of words representation. So with this representation, you can already see D1 seems to suggest a topic like a presidential library. Now this is different from another document, which might be represented as a different vector, D2 here. Now in this case, the document covers programming and library, but it doesn't talk about presidential. So what does this remind you? Well, you can probably guess the topic is likely about the program language and the library is software lab library. So this shows that by using this vector space representation, we can actually capture the differences between topics of documents. Now you can also imagine there are other vectors. For example, D3 is pointing to that direction that might be about the presidential program. And in fact, we can place all the documents in this vector space and they will be pointing to all kinds of directions. And similarly, we're going to place our query also in this space as another vector. And then we're going to measure the similarity between the query vector and every document vector. So in this case, for example, we can easily see D2 seems to be the closest to this query vector. And therefore, D2 will be ranked above others. So this is basically the main idea of the vector space model. So to be more precise, to be more precise, vector space model is a framework 
In this framework, we make the following assumptions. First, we represent a document and query by a term vector. So here a term can be any basic concept, for example, a word or a phrase, or even n gram of characters. Those are just sequence of characters inside a word. Each term is assumed to define one dimension. Therefore, n terms in our vocabulary would define an n-dimensional space. A query vector would consist of a number of elements corresponding to the weights on different terms. Each document vector is also similar. It has a number of elements and each value of each element is indicating the weight of the corresponding term. Here you can see we assume there are n dimensions, therefore there are n elements, each corresponding to the weight on a particular term. So the relevance in this case will be assumed to be the similarity between the two vectors. Therefore, our ranking function is also defined as the similarity between the query vector and document vector. Now, if I ask you to write a program to implement this approach in a search engine, you would realize that this is far from clear, right? We haven't said a lot of things in detail. Therefore, it's impossible to actually write a program to implement this. That's why I said this is a framework and this has to be refined in order to actually suggest a particular ranking function that you can implement on a computer. So what does this framework not say? Well, it actually hasn't said uh, many things that would be required in order to uh, implement this function. First, it did not say how we should define or select the basic concepts exactly. We clearly assume the concepts are orthogonal, otherwise there will be redundancy. For example, if two synonyms are somehow distinguished as two different concepts, then they would be defining two different dimensions and that would clearly uh, cause a redundancy here or over emphasizing of matching this concept because it would be as if you match the two dimensions when you actually match one semantic concept. Secondly, it did not say how we exactly should place documents and the query in this space. Basically, I showed you some examples of query and document vectors but where exactly should the vector for a particular document point to? Okay. So this is equivalent to how to define the term weights. How do you compute those element values in those vectors? Now this is a very important uh, question because term weight in the query vector indicates the importance of the term. So depending on how you assign the weight, you might prefer some terms to be matched uh, over others. Similarly, the term weight in the document is also very meaningful. It indicates how well the term characterizes the document. If you got it wrong, then you clearly don't represent the document accurately. Finally, how to define the similarity measure is also not given. So these questions must be addressed before we can have a operational function that we can actually implement uh, using a program language. So how do we solve these problems is the main topic of the next lecture.